What's up, sons of Montezuma? The Aztecs football season is finally here. And joining us today is the first member of our Sons of Monty NIL team for 2023. San Diego State's QB1, Jalen Moose Maiden, joins the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Sons of Montezuma podcast. I am your host, Mateo San Diego. The college football season is just weeks away, and today we are entering into our fifth, fifth season of talking all things San Diego State Aztecs football. Meanwhile, the team begins fall camp on July 27th. So we want to thank you for joining us today. Be sure to click and like that subscribe button on YouTube if you are watching us there. Our channel keeps growing. We're very appreciative of it for all you Aztecs fans from all over the nation. And if audio, if the audio versions are more your thing, you can definitely subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple, iHeart, and pretty much everywhere else podcasts are available. I am joined by my co-host as usual. Well, wait, wait, wait. You changed the background on me, man. I, I was enjoying the, the background. You had a Snapdragon Stadium. He's defending our borders from sea to shining sea. It is K5 James. What's up, James? What's up, man? Glad to be here again. Yeah, I was feeling that Snapdragon Stadium. What happened? I, I had to change it up, man. Dan is giving me too much shit about it. So, <laughs> as <laughs> usual, it definitely looked pretty dorky with it. I can't lie. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I moved my seats towards you guys because I, I don't want to miss any any moment of you guys, uh, you know, busting each other's chops. So you, you recognize that voice. It is the dirtiest of the dance. How does it get so dirty but stay so clean? What's up, D Morton 78 on Twitter? How you doing, man? Great, man. Just ready to drink a few beers and interview some people and have some fun. That's right. So if you guys are enjoying a cold beverage, make sure it is Ale Smith State Ale, the official tailgating beer of the san diego state aztecs where's Guys, james here? Where, where's james <laughs> <laughs> i gotta work an hour man i can't be drinking <laughs> that's right be responsible be responsible out there yeah. like james yes <laughs> yeah. well i can't wait for this next interview guys like it, it's kind of a trip because he hardly does many interviews from what i've seen and what i've heard I want to hear what this guy has to say, and I'm excited to, to see what all the listeners have to say after this episode. That's kind of a weak introduction. <laughs> yeah, should we take it again from the top? I would, dude. That's kind, of, that kind of terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just his part. Making his Sons of Montezuma podcast debut, our next guest burst onto the scene last year in 2022, having started the season on defense, playing valuable snaps at the safety position, he was thrust back onto the offense when injuries and roster changes left the quarterback room decimated and the Aztecs in jeopardy of a lost year. In week six, he immediately helped SDSU over Hawaii and his 322 yards were the most by an Aztec quarterback in their starting debut since current quarterback coach Ryan Lindley in 2008. Since he moved to the quarterback position for that game against Hawaii, he is ranked third in the nation in yards per completion, 14th in yards per attempt, 17th in passing yards per game, and 25th in total passing yards. At the end of the year, he guided the Aztecs to five victories in their final eight games that included a Hawaii Bowl appearance, and he was the recipient of the team's John Simcox Memorial Trophy given to the Offensive Player of the Year. 
being the first at the quarterback position to win it since Minnesota Vikings current head coach Kevin O'Connell. With his physical playmaking ability and cool under the pressure, we proudly welcome the newest member of the Sons of Montezuma NIL team. You can call him Jalen, but Aztec Nation, we call him number 18, Moose Maiden. Welcome to the show. Points, runs, strides, first down. What's going on, Jalen? Man, I just thank you for having me. Was that too much? Was that a little dramatic? <laughs> <laughs> I was just, some of those stats I didn't even know. So, thank you for that. Very humble, very humble, yes. <laughs> well, if you haven't recognized James up there, K5 James, we call him, and, and Dirtball Dan up there. And, uh, man, it's an honor to have you on the program. We, uh, we're excited about this interview, man. We haven't seen too many interviews or heard too many interviews with you on them. So I'm excited to, to get to know who you are. Yeah, so tell us uh, a little bit about, um, we know you're from Texas, right? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit about like your your beginnings in, in football, man. How you got started going all the way back to Pop Warner, man. Give us the, the scoop. Um, I've been in football since before I can remember. Just, I grew up in like a football factory. My um, my mom played football. My my cousins that are girls played football. My my brothers played it. My uncles played it. Everybody played it. Even my dad played it before he decided to take the basketball route. So I kind of just was thrown into football. You go flag. In my family, you always start flag. And then once you are handling the mechanics, you get thrown straight into tackle football because they want you to be able to get the physicality down. And um, then you just start playing up once you can uh, once you prove it to talent level. And um, you can handle it. You start playing up. So I would play with my older brothers on their teams. And then eventually when I got to the age where I started playing with the kids my age, I mean, I was unstoppable. And then I hit early growth spurts. I think third or fourth grade, I was already 5'5". Five, five. And then sixth grade, I shot up to six foot. So it's kind of how the name got in there, too. And, um, you know, I, I never looked back from it. I started out playing defensive end just because I was always that bigger kid. And um, we didn't have like a weight limit. I know because I talked to a couple of my teammates. I heard there was some weight limit, like to carry the football or something like that. So I did defense and um, started doing running back a little bit. Then that's when I made it switch to quarterback because the quarterback back then, you don't throw the ball. You just fake hand it off and run around the edge. So I started <laughs> off like that. And then I just, I've always only played quarterback ever since then. Did you play other sports? Because you have a pretty strong arm. Did you play any baseball or anything? Um, I didn't. My I actually my mom never let us play baseball. My oldest brother tried T ball or whatever, but I mean he was the only one that got to do anything, I guess, abnormal. It was always football, basketball, and track. I was curious about the the moose nickname. So basically it's all it's all based on your size and, and the growth spurts, huh? Yeah, that and then I don't really run like when I run, it's not a lot of effort shown. It's just very like smooth. And it was always like he's big, and when he runs, it's just smooth like a moose. Yeah. We we made the Utah road trip last year, and where we were all staying, we all stayed in the same spot. And I, they kept having all these photos in the kitchen of a moose in the backyard, and that's all I wanted to see on that trip. I just wanted to see a moose in the backyard. We didn't get to see one. That's crazy. <laughs> That'd be a sight to see. They're, they're intimidating, for sure. <laughs> Garland, Texas, right? Garland, Texas is where you're yeah, from. It's, it's East Dallas, yeah. That's like uh, not too far from Rockwall, Texas, correct? Uh, it's actually Rockwall will connect. Um, there's a little one in, in in between called Rowlett, Texas. But, I mean, it's all like a five-minute drive away from each other. Yeah, we had the chance to interview a former quarterback, Adam Dingwell. We got to see him out there at the uh, Final Four in Houston as well. He's a Texas from uh, Texas quarterback from Rockwall. He had some uh, – some That's nice. Some I almost went to the Final Four. But I had finals, and they didn't get canceled, so – Oh man, priorities. Yeah. What are your priorities at? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I didn't get to go either, man. So don't feel bad. I I, I had some stuff come up last minute and I couldn't make it. <laughs> I at least got to watch an NBA house with a lot of the other teammates. So that was good. That was cool. Awesome. Okay. So when I was out there in Houston, we me and Dan were out there and we had the chance to try some amazing food out there. So now that you're out here in California, you've been out here for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. Tell us, where is the best place to get that 
Texas barbecue out here in San Diego that's like home. <laughs> You're not getting NIL by these places, so don't, 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 <laughs> worry, about it, don't worry about it. Um, there's one by my house called, I want to say Corbin's, and I think that's the only place that I've been to for barbecue. Um, I like catfish, though, and then there's another place by my house called Surfing Soul, I want to say. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that place. Yeah, but it, you got to get there early because it runs out of food. That's my, those are my two spots, but definitely surf and soul because I'm more of like a catfish person other than like barbecue. I love, I love fried catfish. Yeah. <laughs> That's my go to. Have you tried, uh, have you tried Coops yet over in Lemon Grove? I haven't. Give that one a try, man. It's pretty good. The guy is from Texas. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe give that one a shot, see if you like it. Yes, sir. I'll add it to my list. Okay, so while we're getting to know you, Moose, tell us the big debate we had out there in Houston. In and out or Whataburger? Settle it right now. Settle <laughs> it. What's, what's the debate? Who's okay, got listen, it? I, 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 we have the debate on the team all the time, but I say this if you want a burger, In and out is better. But if you want variety, because Whataburger doesn't just have burgers, I would say Whataburger is where you want to be if you want something more. I honestly don't eat burgers at Whataburger, which is why I prefer Whataburger over in and out okay. that's a fair answer man that's, that's a good uh, political answer <laughs> in and out also I, I do say this in and out tastes better in cali than the one that i tried the few that i've tried in texas oh, okay in in general man how do you how do you like california how do you like being out here living out it's here? been nice it's treating me nice um i'm still taking pictures of palm trees i know that everybody from here is like why you keep taking pictures of palm trees <laughs> i'm like i just you don't see this often and sometimes i go to um San Marcos and there's like the like hills and stuff that you can see and because it rained like all the hills are green and stuff now so I always take pictures of that too and everybody's like like you don't you've never seen hills and stuff before and I've, I've never been hiking either so all of that stuff is cool to me you know I'm from yeah, Garland I'm always in the city so I, everybody's taking pictures of skyscrapers and I'm like oh like that's just buildings there so I like it Cali's been good to me I'm glad I moved out here it's been all good <laughs> Awesome, man. Yeah, it seems like you're really enjoying it. I'm glad they're taking advantage of being in this place. Yes, sir. So, Jalen, uh, one of the things I always like when I'm talking to the players is kind of just learning more about, you know, their high school, their recruitment, who recruited them, um, what made you decide to go to Mississippi State. Like, you know, kind of just tell us, you know, spill out. What was high school like? How what was your recruitment like? Uh, high school for me was crazy because um, because I had two older brothers and uh, one of them was – he wasn't as highly recruited, but he was still highly recruited for safety, but he wanted to play wide receiver. So his offers list on the wide receiver side was a little bit lower. He had like Rice, Texas Tech, um, and a couple of lower D1s. And he ended up going to Rice. And then that uh, jump started my other brother who ended up going to Alabama, who plays safety now with the, the Bills. And by the time it was my turn, I mean – the coaches of coaches of coaches that had already been through with my brothers already knew who I was. So I ended up getting my first offer in like eighth grade. I was just like one of those early kids. So I want to say that was Houston. And then right after Houston was Bryant. And after that, I mean, it just skyrocketed. It was times where I wasn't, I hadn't seen my teachers in like days because, you know, you go up there and then they're like, Hey, coach wants to see you in this coach wants to see you at this time. Coach wants to see you this time. Um, and by the time it was all said and done, I think I may have had like 40 some offers. I mean, because once I committed, I had got like 13, 14 more. But, you know, you don't post those if you lower to your school or at least that's what my family like philosophy was. Mississippi State. So who was your lead recruiter there and what made you choose them initially? Um, funny, I actually wasn't even going to Mississippi State. I was going to go to um, Ohio State and I was going to commit there my like sophomore year. They offered me on my birthday. And then a couple of weeks later, they had an offense coordinator, Tim Beck. He ended up um, going to Texas, I want to say. And he was a coordinator there. And I, I just I didn't want to do football in Texas. I wanted to get out of Texas. Um, and I was with my uncle and we were I can't remember what we were doing, but somehow we we're at Mississippi State. And we went to this camp and then they offered me. And I was like, well, I talked to the coach. They didn't even know who I was really because I had never really talked to him. I kind of already had my mindset. And then uh, Dan Mullen was the guy that was recruiting me, him and um, Brett Elliott for a little bit. And it was uh, Brian Johnson. 
those two were the ones that recruited me and um, they brought me in they sat me down they were just like you know we're going to be here for the next 10 to 15 like this is a place I'm with <laughs> family you know there's no other place better than Mississippi State everything that they broke on was like family family this family that and then um, my dad's side of the family is from Mississippi and so I just felt like you know I get to know more of them um, then I commit we sign a letter of intent, and then like three weeks later, he's going to Florida. So, I mean, maybe he thought he'd be there ten, but you know, you just never know what's going to happen. So that happens, mm-hmm. and then you know, Mike. So Mike Leach is coming in. Actually, it was Coach Moorhead from Penn State. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm calling the RPO guru, and I mean, I learned a lot from him and Andrew Briner for my two years that I was there, and then Coach Leach came in. So then, so Coach Leach is there, mm-hmm. and the fit. What'd you feel about the fit initially with his style of offense and mm-hmm. your, the way you play a quarterback? So I thought it was going to be the perfect fit because growing up, I've always been in like those uh, spread. Um, so my area is right there by like t- um, TCU, Texas Tech, Baylor. So I grew up in those offenses where it's a quick screen here, it's a bubble screen there, then it's go walls, and then it's back to the quick screen, stop route, slants, skinny posts. So I was like, oh, that's going to be perfect, high tempo offense. And then he comes in, it was like the Deion Sanders treatment for us and the quarterbacks. There was me, Keaton, and uh, Garrett Schrader. He's basically like, I'm going to bring my own guys. Y'all should probably transfer. We'll help you transfer. And I was just like, wow, like I'm not even going to really get a shot to – uh do anything and then I mean it's kind of how it was I mean he got in he would have like talked to those guys a little bit more the ones he brought in and then um by like game three I kind of just had enough of just being like another guy on the roster so then I put my name in the transfer portal man that's life as a college athlete right there especially in today's game you know and it's sad because we would go through practice and I mean there would be some practices where I didn't miss so but just to never have really gotten a shot for in that offense is one of the things I, I regret not getting to you. Yeah. yeah. The the connection with San Diego State, how how did that kind of get established? My my oldest brother, um, after he got done playing football, he was a coach and he had did a lot of like coaching clinics, coached a lot of like uh, those little high school all-star games. And then there was a coach here that had also coached with my brother. And um, when I put my name in the portal, I had because it was around the time that Michigan was losing their quarterback, Tennessee was losing their quarterback. So I had got offered from both of them and a couple other powerhouse schools. And I was like, man, I kind of just want to go somewhere where I know I'm going to play. And um, there's good football, they have good defense because you can't win a championship without defense. I don't care how much offense you have. So I was really like picking schools carefully. And um, my brother called. He's like, hey, you ever heard of San Diego State? And I was like, is that D1? Like, I mean, in Texas, you you read, once you're a big time recruit, all we look at is like SEC, Big Ten, yeah. Pac 12, Big 12. Yeah. And not even so much Pac 12, just because it's like, it's just way out that way. Like, I had never been past like El Paso before I had moved out here. So <laughs> um, I did some research on it. He sent me some research on it. And then he got me on the phone with Nick uh, and Renati. And I mean, that was that was it. I mean, I talked to the coaches. I ended up they introduced me to Coach Coop, and I mean, he just reminded me of home. He recruits well. Um, he said the right things, and he got me on the phone with Coach Heck, and he he was showing me like things about the offense that it, you know he would implement when I got here. Um, and I told him it was a done deal. Sign me up. Hey, Aztec Nation, stop on over to SonsMontezuma.com where you can find more SDSU sports, news, articles, podcasts, and the freshest and most unique Aztec-inspired merchandise, including our original NIL shop. Lots of new styles there for both men and women, and even kids. Your support to this channel helps fund a lot more creative ideas. So make sure to stop over to sonsofmontezuma.com. Go Aztecs! So then you, so the, so you get to San Diego State, and then, you know, how was your relationship with um, Coach Iglinski, and how did you, you know, you feel like the offense um, 
was good for your for your school, uh, skill set and mm-hmm. how'd you feel initially? I mean, he welcomed me in um, and the quarterbacks that were already here it was Luke Johnson, um, Jordan Brookshire, uh, Marshall, Baylor, and, and me. And then there was a quarterback that just left out. I forgot his name. Uh, I only had met him for like three days or whatever, and he had put his name in the portal. But I mean, those guys were great. They they welcomed me in. Um, and it was cool because Lucas was also a transfer, so he understood how I was. And um, as a transfer, it's not easy coming into this. Pro- any, it's probably not easy going into any program, but this program uh, specifically because of how hard we work here. Like Mississippi State, if you, we don't really work as hard, but the talent's going to show for itself. And if you're not producing on the field, another four or five stars is going to come in and replace you anyways. But here, they really make sure they get every – every bit out of you and you got to buy in. Yeah. So coach heck, he brought me in and I wouldn't say the offense was really tailored to what I did best because I had never took under center snaps. I had never had to hold a snap count or try to draw somebody off sides. I mean, everything to just putting your hands together to get a snap. So that was all new to me. I felt like I was starting from ground zero, but I mean, everything in the shotgun was pretty much similar. Um, concepts weren't half field reads either like it was like full field sweep so that's different for me because now you're like you're just looking at more things you know half field reads you're like oh this person's going to tell you exactly where to go with the bar this one person tells you exactly where to go full field you're reading all the way across so that was, I feel like that was probably the biggest step that I needed to take was from making those quick decisions to being able to hold the ball and see and trust with your eyes and feet yeah that's a big like underrated part of playing quarterback that I don't think most people don't understand is the difference in that offense where you have the half field read versus the full field read. And especially coming under center where you got to turn your back to the the defense, man, that's a, a big adjustment for quarterbacks. My first time doing it, I turned around and I don't even think I was looking downfield. I was like looking at my old lineman's back and coach was like, and film, what are you seeing? And I was like, honestly, coach, I turned around and everybody was just everywhere back there. And he was laughing. He was like, yeah, you'll get used to it. And you do get used to it, but I mean, it's all just repetition. One of my my favorite part of your game is your pocket presence, how relaxed you are, and how you all stay in that pocket. And you'll maybe you do it too long sometimes, right? But you will stay in. You'll go through your reads. You'll go through it, and you don't get the happy feet. And so, where'd you learn that? Like you're you're so calm in the pocket, and you're so it's really kind of a joy to watch you play because just how relaxed you are in the pocket for sure. Uh, just back in high school. Um, a lot of my receivers, I was blessed. I mean, I had four years of just great receivers. My first two years, I had a receiver who plays with the Baltimore Ravens right now. His name's Devin Duvernay and his twin brother, who was also just as good, probably not as fast, but just as talented. And then um, my best friend, he played on the outside and he went to Washington State out of high school. And I want to say all my receivers went somewhere D1. And like a few of them are in the league right now. So I was always blessed to like be able to let them work and knew that they were going to win. And I was on a pretty good school. I was at a pretty good team. Um, And then it just translated. And then now I never had to be like a dual threat type of guy. So it allowed me to really work on my pocket presence and they all helped me. And a lot of the drills that we did at Mississippi State were to stay in the pocket and let the receivers work. So so all of that ended up translating to now. Yeah, that's my, that's my, I love seeing that, you know, yeah. just even, I mean, I don't even, if you, we might take some few extra hits, but man, if you could just get that one extra second, you know, that's all you need. yeah. Split second. Like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I'm sitting here. I'm, I, I'm just listening. I'm so quiet. Cause I'm just taking it all in. Like I'm kind of shocked. Like I'm kind of in awe right now because you know, that was one thing we watched the games together. Yeah. The pocket presence just, it jumps out on the screen and you're just like, that extra last millisecond and you let it go and it changes the whole play turns, you know, something from nothing. I'm kind of blown away that, you know, you, you came to state and I remember vividly that, that championship game that we had up in Carson and you got some run in there towards the end, you know, marched it down, got the foot, got, got the football in the end zone and we were going crazy. Like, okay, it was the end of the game, but at least we got to see a glimpse of you and what you could do out there. And then come into last year and we were trying to see, okay, what, what's the quarterback situation look like? And then we see, Oh, he's moved to safety. Wow. Okay. I mean, first off, thank you for being that team player 
and allowing yourself to, to be coached and to move to that other side of the ball. I mean, that, that had to be a difficult move. So some of the questions people want to know was, you know, playing in the secondary, I mean, did that give you any kind of a different perspective at the quarterback position when you came back? Um, I would say no. For me, going from quarterback to safety helped me more because once I moved over, I'm like, oh, well, the quarterback can only look where he throws the ball. I mean, unless you're Patrick Mahomes. So yeah. <laughs> a lot of times when I got the – I was free and we were doing like man free and I was the, the deep safety, you would just backpedal and follow the quarterback's eyes. And it was just natural for me to just know like if number like number two ran a speed out, number one's either running a go or he's running an in breaker route. So I would always, I mean, I probably had like eight or nine picks so far I can't just, just, just off natural, like just flowing to the ball and just being in the right spots at the right time. But that helped me because coming from quarterback, I had knew that it doesn't matter what's going on over there. Quarterback looking the way he's going to so just naturally drift that way. Mm. Did you, did you enjoy I, did. I, I fell in love with it. I'm not going to lie to you. And it's just <laughs> the culture that they have over there and, the way you get treated, it's it's not really about everything else, you know, around football. It's did you make the play when the play was coming to you or not? That's all they care about. Nice. Yeah, it seems like that. Uh, what you said makes a lot of sense because you kind of have more of a, an understanding of what the quarterback is trying to do mm-hmm. versus a guy who's never played quarterback before. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's that's a, an interesting that's an interesting take. That's pretty cool. It was that Toledo game, right, where you had like. 10 tackles or was. so you must have been feeling man I got this now you know like I'm gonna be yeah. man this is my this is my position this is you know I could really make some you know I could I can make some plays here and I'm getting better and you know I mean it really started in practice um spring ball when I first moved over I was gar- I was garbage and then the whole the whole summer I was on the phone with my brother I, I had him on the FaceTime on the field and he was just showing me drills, showing me drills. Him, Sedarius Barfield, Vicajo, I mean, they were helping me out. Like, I would get the zone drops. I couldn't – I didn't understand zone because you're just in an area, like, <laughs> in there, kind of just looking at people and, like, dropping it. Um, so, Vicajo helped me with that. And then a lot of, like, the DB footwork mechanics, I used to I used to be in Sed's ear every day. Hey, it's eight when you want to go to the field. Hey, it's eight when you want to go to the field. So I would say, wait till eight and hit me up. So, I'd always be like, when you want to go, when you want to go, when you want to go. So fall camp, I ended up jumping a couple spots. And then um, I want to say Utah is when I really knew, like, oh, like, I'm, I, I can do this for real. Like, I had a, I had a tackle there. I did special teams. But I, they had put in, like, a third down package for me to spy in the quarterback. And I was like, man, if I ever get my opportunity, like, I'm already, I already know I'm ready. And then I finally did, like, a week or two later. Yeah, you could tell. I mean, you could tell you were playing with that, that passion that you had for it. Because, I mean, you were getting meaningful snaps at that point. Yeah. So so then Heklinski gets let go, right? Mm-hmm. And what is your first instinct when this happens? Is are you is it you feel bad or are you thinking, you know, this is a guy who brought me in? What, what what's the thought process there? Because I just I've been around so long, you know, I've seen how the kind of coaches come and go. So I mean, we had a connection and I I mean I, I wish them well, but I mean, I was fully committed to the defense, so, you know, it, it wasn't no hard feelings or nothing like that. I mean, I just knew yeah. it was business and they weren't producing because I finally – and I think this is why the defense really loves me and stuff like that when I went back to office is because I can finally say that I understand going on a 15-play drive, stopping them at the goal line, and then the offense goes three and out, and then we're back out on the field. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, I just was – I was just ready to just do whatever for the defense, you know, and then – the Sunday, I think before that, the bye week, they called me in. They were like, hey, you know, we're going we're gonna to have you as a backup for Liu. We're going to still let you do the defense and stuff. But for seven on seven, like the defense of Indy, but for seven on seven and stuff, we're going to like have you come do quarterback. But, you know, we're not really looking at you to be the starter. And I was like, okay, whatever. Like, because Pat was going to come back from the concussion. Kyron was sitting out a game from the, uh, the target. And so I was like, yeah, you know, I'll still be second string. And then the Hawaii game happened. That's what I want to know about that week, like that week leading up to that Hawaii game, because with all I mean, we covered it, you know, with everything that was so crazy going on that week leading up to it. So. 
what was that week like? I mean, did, when did they tell you you were gonna get that start? The week was the week was chill for me, honestly, because I mean, I I just told them all the things that we did in the spread, like out routes, slants, the ten yard outs, the bunch ten yard outs. This is how you can get them condensed so you could see the uh, the release. And I mean, they had just a little bitty package for me, so I would do the DB stuff, and then they would have. Like a, they call it like a moose period. Like it was on the sheet as moose period. So I went over there. I had like 10 plays of Skelly. Um, all of those plays were the ones that we drew up for that um, on that Sunday. And I mean, we did that through the whole week. I never had any other snaps. I didn't have to do under center really. Um, it was just, I was just watching Lee do his thing the whole week. And I want to say Thursday, I just had a really good day. Like we did this two, we always do two minute on Thursdays and the offense from what I remember never scored when, um, when I was on defense, cause you know, I mean, I don't know, but something would happen and they just never would score or they would end in the field goal. And we got our first like big shot. We scored and the team kind of just lit up. Like even the defense was like, wow, like, you know, Moose is really doing his thing. And but I'm still thinking like, hey, this is Lee's show. Uh, I'm gonna probably be back on special teams tomorrow, like when we go for the the walkthrough meetings and stuff um, at the hotel, like the Friday. So we're doing that. I'm still meeting with the quarterbacks and then like going back and doing the safe stuff. And the morning of like the Friday morning, he comes in and he was like everybody's kind of like looking at me like the GAs and stuff. And they're like, you know, are you, are you ready to go? If you have to go. And I'm like, yeah, like, you know, I watched the film. I, I seen a wide, you know, the defense is aggressive. So there's a lot of things that we did to take advantage of that. And I just knew the game plan was good. And um, coach comes into the meeting and no one knows who started at this point. Like they haven't announced me and Lee were just both taking reps. And I'm not, I'm not nervous, but I'm just like, wow, like what if I'm actually going to get in a quarterback and I was playing a safety a week later, like, <laughs> And then he finally announced it that I was starting and everybody in the room kind of like lit up and um so is it is that and, Coach Hoke? Coach Hoke or Hoke? Coach, Coach, Coach Lindley and Coach Hoke oh. came in both at the okay. same. And um yeah, it was crazy. And I was just like, wow, I'm about to start my first game after stop playing quarterback, you know? So <laughs> um my biggest thing is like the, the speed of the game, because obviously you can't really repu- uh, replicate that in practice. Yeah. You know, so I got out there. Coach Lindley's like, hey, you good? And I'm like, yeah, like, I'm going to do my thing. And I've always been a reserved person. So he was kind of looking at me like, you know, you're not really making any, emotional, <laughs> like, anything. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm good. I'm good. I swear I'm good. And then the game happened. And, then, I mean, the game was, like, so slow. Like, everything that we had practiced in practice, like, the same looks, the same rotations. It was just all the same. I mean, my arm was a little rusty. And around the third or fourth quarter, it was actually dying on me. I was like, "Damn, I had to do some more." <laughs> but nah, it was uh, it did turn out good. Damn. So even the week of the game, you were still practicing on defense. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's uh, that's <laughs> wild, man. <laughs> three hundred and twenty-two yards. Three hundred twenty-two yards at the, at the end of that game, man. And then and even after the game, I thought it was just going to be for that week. Like I thought Braxton was coming back or. Yeah. somebody you know and we just continue that how how was your um relationship with coach Lindley right away like did you feel like connection or um uh, how did it look seemed like he was trying to work to your strengths right he was uh when he first got there I mean they had said he came from Mississippi State and he had, he had asked for me personally but I was thinking like oh maybe he saw the defensive because he was a defensive uh analyst I think so I was like maybe he saw the scout team for when you know, I was there with like Jeffrey Simmons, Montez Sweat, and John Abrams and Cam Denzel, guys like that. But I was like, you know, that was years ago. Like I haven't thrown the ball. And I was like, okay, whatever. He trusted me. Um, and I hate, I hate losing more than I, I like winning. So I was just like, I'm not gonna get out there and make a fool out of myself. Like if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna like fully prepare for it. So really just his trust in me from the baseline when we first met. Um, I kind of had like a a comfortability with him but it's grown it's grown since then but then that week I mean it was kind of just like I was kind of like who is this guy you know like how does he know me how does he have this much trust in me and <laughs> obviously he sees something in me that I didn't see in myself so I was like you know what whatever he says whatever he has for me 
and I mean, Coach Horry and Coach Cooper are doing their things too. Um, it's, it wasn't just Coach Lindley, but the fact that he had brought me from the defense, from stuff he saw years ago, um, I don't know. It's kind of like we connected, like off the off the jump. Awesome, man. Hey, real quick, I gotta go back real so real quick. So uh-huh. I re- I saw this video of you when you were in high school, actually, <laughs> and you made this great throw. And I think I want to say Cam Newton was that a Cam yeah, Newton yeah, camp, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Like, what was going on? I saw the whole crowd go crazy. Like, it was you were in high school, right? I was a, I was a freshman in high school. It was um. I want to say it was like a Cam Newton seven on seven event, but there was like a quarterback challenge in the middle of the day and everybody was kind of at like 16 or I can't remember the, the it was like a point total and everybody was kind of there, but nobody hit the little, the little, um, fade ball. And I was the only one that hit it and I won the competition on that throw. So that's kind of what I came to do. Man, you can see that Cam Newton was like in shock, you know. <laughs> I, I wanted that, to bring it up uh, earlier. I just I just shook my hand. I was cool little dude. And you know, I'm young. Cam Newton was popping back then, so it was like, yeah. oh my god, I want Cam Newton. Cam got to take a picture. He took his cleats off, signed them, gave them to me. That was a good deal. Awesome. Cam's got some great like gifts and memes throughout his career. You know yeah. what I mean? But that that was a one I hadn't seen before until recently, yeah. right? And you just see his face look back, like who? who <laughs> like, what the hell did he see? You know. <laughs> It's yeah. great. It was a cool deal. Cool, man. So we'll kind of fast forward a little bit if that's all right, Matt. Yeah. You know, you, you went through that process of taking over really quickly at the quarterback spot. Mm. How do you feel now after going through half a season and then spring spring camp and with fall camp coming up? Do you feel like way more comfortable now? Or how how's your your growth do you feel? In this, in this way, way, way more comfortable. Um, at first, I just felt like a safety that just came back to play quarterback. Like, and it didn't really, maybe not until like after the Fresno loss or maybe after the San Jose win was I like, okay, like I'm really a quarterback now. Like I could, I could finally release that little part of the, my life that I went through. And it became less of, I'm just the guy filling in and more of, I'm going to be the guy and I am the guy. And that's more of my mentality, how it switched. And um, just the approach that I took from it, it was more like I'm filling in to, all right, this is my job. And now we got to stack these wins on top of each other. And yeah, and now just all the stuff that I have worked on, all the stuff Coach Lindley has put in my ear that I needed to work on. I mean, I feel like I'm not a completely different quarterback, but a, a more polished version of what I was last year. What, what did he, what did you want to work on? Timing. Cause a lot of times, like you said, I did um, hang on to it. And then the, that decision to take off and go, cause like I, I told you, I never really had to be in that role to be a dual threat. Like I was always labeled to do it there cause I was fast and I could run, but I never had to, like most of my runs came from if I had to scramble out of the pocket from like getting flushed out from the pass or something like that. So like, over the spring ball, like if someone would break down, like instead of trying to extend it, extend it, extend it, just get out and go and get the yards and live to play another down instead of doing the whole Mahomes act and stuff, because that's only going to get you so far. Move the chains, move the chains, yeah. right? <laughs> move the chains. All right. So working this spring with the, the new batch of receivers, have you, what particular receivers have you, you felt more of a connection with so far? Mm-hmm. I mean, really all of them. I mean, each and every receiver will have their different things. Um, but I mean, I just like the size of Breon, you know, so that's we get down in that red zone. I know me and him didn't connect like I wanted to in, um, the New Mexico game with those two phase, but I wanted him to, to know that I trusted him. And I mean, right after the incompletion, I went right back to him again. And that one was a little worse of a ball that I could have put out there, but this whole spring, I, it was really started in the summer. I mean, I called those guys up almost every other week. Like, hey, this is what we're doing this week. You know, Monday, Tuesday, I want to work on short routes. Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to go deeper. And then Friday is straight, like, uh, red zone routes. So I feel like everybody's gotten a step better. And, I'm, I mean, I'm trusting all the receivers, Makai, Fleet, Josh. I mean, just everybody that came back is, is really doing their thing. Do you, um, you have, like, a, a relationship or a good comfortableness with uh... – with Redmond like is he could he be like a safety valve guy could he be a playmaker or and I mean all spring I don't know if y'all were at any of the practices but I mean there was times where stuff would break down and he would come to me afterwards hey just put it up there and then 
I finally started just putting it up there in his area, and he's coming down with a lot more of those passes that you didn't see last season. It's a totally different dynamic, like what you're saying. Now you know QB1 spot. It's that jersey with Maiden on the back. That That's who everybody's going to be looking towards for that leadership and how you instill the offense and, and the confidence with all the different guys. So, I mean, how does that feel, you know, knowing that, you know, the defensive guys gave you that respect because you, you walked in their shoes, you played in their cleats, and then now, mm-hmm. now this yeah, offense is, is yours to take it as, as far as, as you guys as a group collectively can do. I mean, what, what has that got to be like looking towards this season? Uh, it feels good because when I came in last year, I knew that Jesse and Tyra were really good, and I got to guard them a lot of times, especially if they came <laughs> into the slot. And I just I knew what they were capable of, but it's different when you're the one throwing it and you're the one making that decision with the ball. So it's like I knew I've seen Tyrell go up and moss people, but it's like for me to throw that ball, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't really comfortable unless I saw, like, they had a step on somebody or um, they were about to break down for the route. But, like, as far as, like, Tyrell one-on-one and the, the DB was on his hip to just throw him something like something that only he could get you know I wasn't that comfortable with it and they would always tell me about it and I'm like yeah you know I'm just not comfortable and it wasn't like we had those reps built over the summer and the spring and the fall so now that I do have that I know what guys can do what and I know like if I'm in a third out situation and I got Mark running just a simple over route like if he's one-on-one or somebody's trailing him or somebody's underneath him but I can put that ball over the top of him and I know he's going to catch it and then offensive uh philosophy Mm -hmm. Uh, Ryan Lindley had mentioned kind of like maybe a Utah Andy Ludwig style offense what changes do you expect to see really from the previous offense to what you guys expect to run this year for me it's uh it's areas of the field that we're going to be working and the position that we're going to be putting people in to get the ball so I feel like last year, like a lot of times we wanted to give the ball to Jordan Bird, but we were just handing it off to him, you know? Right. Yeah. And it's like Jordan sure. Bird with the tackle. It's like if he busts one, he busts one. But, you know, I don't really think that's the guy we really wanted to be, like the one running dives and powers and stuff like that. So getting Keenan out in space because y'all saw against Middle Tennessee, you give him this much room, he takes that much. So, yeah, I just how are we going to get the ball to, the, to our playmakers and then like the areas of the field? are going to vary and that's what I like too is that you're not always hitting the same post corner or you're not always hitting the same out route like it's coming from a different area same it's like the same throw it's coming from a different spot good stuff man good stuff uh you're starting to get recognized a little, little bit more off the field it is it is crazy <laughs> first time it happened to me I was at Chili's and um there was a guy behind me and he had a newspaper and I guess the worker walked by had seen it and he had actually put a newspaper. And he came up to me. He's like, is this, is this you? And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. But I, I go to Chili's a lot. And me and um, the guy's name's Ryan. And we'd talk. And he was just like, hey, like, you know, you don't have to do that here. He's just trying to eat his food and stuff like that. And I was like, no, nah, that's no biggie. But that was the first time it happened. It's happened a few times, like, since I've been uh, QB1, I guess. That made me think of something interesting real quick, Dan, because, like, you know, your, your persona, you're, you're super laid back, you're calm, cool. Like you said, you know, Coach Lindley was, was kind of looking at you like, are you good? Like, are, are you okay? Like, it doesn't seem like you really get too high or too low, just that even kill. Is that your personality? Do you think sometimes people look at that like, okay, well, you know, is, is, he, really, is he really in the game or, or how do you think? I mean, I feel like I definitely have my moments in the game, but uh, I feel like at quarterback, I'm more just proud to see what my teammates are doing. Like, I throw a screen and he takes it for 60. It's not like I'm I'm so excited for myself. It's like, oh, like Keenan just did this. He's great. He's doing his thing. Um, but I've been working on it. My own little celebrations is just I, my it was my my high school quarterback coach was the one that like drilled it, even kill, even kill, even kill. Like, and he was like that stoic person, like. Yeah. I was like, I always wanted to be like him. Like he, no one ever knew what he was doing, but he was always doing what he was supposed to. Mm-hmm. And I always just strive to be that person. His name is Coach Northcutt. And he ended up um, leaving out my senior year. But I mean, I have no, no bad hate to him. He was probably my favorite coach I ever had. Like I've always strived to be him. And I mean, it just grew into my own personality to just always be even kill and never be too high, never be too low. Well, Jalen, I- wasn't Jalen's family by our tailgate, Matt? Yeah, I mean, we we, it, yeah. Like, we got to meet them, and they're really good people. Really proud of you, and 
<laughs> they are different than me. They, my family's like real big personalities. <laughs> they were so outgoing. I got a chance. Yes, to meet them. And, they are. And, I mean, it was such a joy to have them actually stop by the tailgate, get to show them what we do, what we're about, all that good stuff. There was a story that your mother relayed to me. Now, from what I understand, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just, I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it's not necessarily a, 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 it's indirectly about you, but so from what I've seen on other interviews, right, you learned how to play the piano, the keyboards, and that was a result because I believe your grandfather had gotten sick. So you had to learn, you and your brothers or whatnot, taught yourself. <laughs> I thought that was incredibly cool, right? I'm a musician myself, come from a musical family, so I could relate. I get it. One thing she told me, though, was a story about your grandfather. Maybe I have this wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did he get struck by lightning? That, that's the story. That I, <laughs> you, know, you, I, I, you probably heard the same one, but... um. Yeah, that was a story I heard. He was out on the gun range or something like that. He put his hand on a pole when it was raining and it struck the pole and went down and got him as well. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and he, I mean, he was he was good after that. I mean, I, I know yeah, she he was good. He was good. That happened before I was born. So, you know, like I said, that was a story that I heard as well. Man. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a miracle. <laughs> that's, a, that's a genuine miracle everybody can tell so and what that, type of stuff do you like to play going to the musical side i gotta know so like what what type of stuff did you grow up playing that you taught yourself i, I, I mean when it first happened just like you said he was sick so he couldn't play no more and i practically lived at my grandpa's house so i was there every day all day through the night spending night weekdays school days weekends i was always over there so i would just play i started out playing the songs that he would play um, they were basic songs, gospel songs. And then as I got better, I started like learning songs that were popular. So around the time it was like, you know, Rihanna Umbrella, uh, Umbrella or some Beyonce songs. And then um, now I just pretty much play whatever someone wants to hear. It only takes me like 10 to 15 minutes to learn a song. I play by ear. Oh, um, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I personally like blues, jazz, when you can uh, improv and do stuff like that. So um, actually, I don't even have my piano at my house. I took it over to um, Kate Bennett's house. I, I spent a lot of time over there with the whole line because um, they live together. The whole line lives together. So I took it over there one time for like a jam sesh. Um, still trying to get Mark Redman because he plays the guitar to get him come here, uh, come over here <laughs> a little bit. So we're going to have to yeah. set up a concert, man. We have to set up a live concert. Yeah, he's, I'm trying to get him. he's out there in the media day right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just texted him. He said he's having a good time. <laughs> That's good, man. But you, you got something, Dan, it looked like you were chomping up a bit. Um, What was I going to ask, actually? I actually forget what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> very, very thankful for the opportunity to share with you and, and get to know who Moose Maiden is a little bit more and, and your journey to get to this point, the, the QB1 of the Aztecs. And, and we're looking forward to this season. Uh, you know, we're Aztecs fans. We're, we're used to throw whatever at us, you know, all, all the expansion mess, all the new stadium, the, the so many seasons of, of what's going to happen. But one thing for sure, we'll be out there rooting for you. and. And all the guys. So I just want to thank Jalen. Like, thank you for the time. I'm glad uh, that you're a part of the Sons, Sons of Montezuma NIL team. And hopefully, like, I like talking to you. It'd be cool if maybe closer to season or in season, we could set up a time too, just to, you know, get your thoughts. Thank you for giving us your time and being gracious with your time. And we really appreciate you, man. Well, thank you so much. We'll get some, uh, we'll get those designs live. We'll get those out there for people to people to shop so all you listeners all you watchers out there make sure you go support moose maiden in the sons of montezuma nil shop let's support our guy and uh have a big year moose thank you for having me thank you brother all right man super down to earth right that was a good And that's going to do it for this special Moose Maiden episode of the Sons of Montezuma podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and give us your comments down below. Let us know what you thought about everything that Moose had to share with us. And while you're at it, 
be sure to go support Jalen Maiden at our online shop. We have a special Moose Maiden collection at sonsofmontezuma.com. Fresh new shirts, hats, posters, and more items to come featuring our Aztecs QB1 Moose Maiden. Just go to the NIL menu button in the shop. And stay tuned for the next episode soon to come where another one of our Sons of Monty NIL team members is sure to join us as fall camp gets underway and the 2023 San Diego State Aztecs take the field week zero versus Ohio University at Snapdragon Stadium. Until next time, on behalf of the guys, K5 James, Dirtball Dan, yo, 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 yo. this is Mateo San Diego, oh, God, Sons of Montezuma.com. Go Aztecs.